What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today I have the keyboard comparison y'all have been asking me for non-stop the past few weeks. Today we're going to be checking out the Corsair Gaming K95 Platinum RGB keyboard versus the brand new Razer Huntsman Elite. Now this one just came out, these are both the like top of the line premium gaming keyboards from both companies. So. In this comparison, not going to be picking a winner necessarily, but more so, you know, comparing the specs, going over the features of each one, talking about the pros and cons and my experiences with both of these. In case you're interested in picking these up, hopefully it'll help you make a better purchase decision in the end. So first off, both keyboards look nice at first glance. They definitely give off that gamer vibe to be expected, but they're still both constructed to their company's design language. As for the K95 Platinum, the keyboard is made of anodized metal with a brushed aluminum top plate, which looks nice, but it is an absolute pain to keep looking clean. Dust is just always gonna collect in those fine grooves, so you're gonna have to wipe this thing down pretty frequently. So kind of a trade-off. It looks nice, but you gotta keep it looking nice. Along the left side of the keyboard, we have six macro keys, which are G1 through G6, and they're easily programmable inside the software. And I always find that these are definitely useful, and I'm sure a lot of gamers out there could take advantage of macro keys as well. On that top side, you have your profile switching button for toggling between the three onboard profiles that you could set. You have your brightness level button, as well as the Windows lock key for disabling the Windows button. Then over on the top right-hand side of the keyboard are the dedicated media keys, Always a fantastic feature for quick volume adjustments or skipping a Spotify track. Corsair has had these for a while now. But new to this keyboard, along the top backside, the K95 Platinum features this light bar. This is just more of a wow factor kind of thing, add some extra pop to your desktop, and it does throw you know, a slight bit of glow to your desk. There on the backside, we also have a USB pass-through for plugging in things like a flash drive or your mouse, and I've always done that just to keep down the cable clutter. I can just route it down through the hole in my desk, just makes my desktop look more clean. Now lastly, before we move on, they do include a double-sided detachable wrist rest. It snaps into place on the bottom here, and the texture is also reversible in case you want to just switch it up, but it's not the most comfortable thing in the world here, I'll admit that. The rubber's pretty thin, it's just not doing much for me. But now let's switch gears and talk about the Razer Huntsman Elite. Razer went for a slightly more simplistic look with their keycap font, which I do prefer. But if you've noticed, I actually replaced both of the keycap sets with these double shot shine through keycaps. And these are only like $25. Definitely helps enhance the look of the chroma lighting. So if you notice the difference of keycaps between shots, that's why. But back to the board itself, it features a matte aluminum top plate. Definitely makes it a rugged keyboard. But new to the keyboard lineup is going to be the addition of their own dedicated media keys. I was so happy when they announced that. These are more of a stiff button that don't necessarily like fit in with the design of the overall keyboard, but that's okay, I'm just happy they included it. And they also make up for that with the inclusion of their new multifunctional dial here. In stock, right out of the box, this is just your standard volume adjustment essentially, but you can go inside the software and really make this do whatever you want. We'll have more on this in a few minutes when we talk about the software, this thing is just really useful. But other than that, that's about it in terms of onboard keys. Razer does also have the onboard macro recording with the function keys, as well as adjusting your brightness, the windows mode, but that is all done with the function row. And they do now have five profiles stored on the board, which are also synced with Razer's cloud storage for the first time. But competing and going right along with Corsair's light bar, they took it up a step by including a light strip around the entire keyboard just to give your desk and keyboard that extra pop. And to even one up that then, they included that same strip all around their wrist rest. This is also detachable and it actually just magnetically snaps right into place when you align it with the little pogo pins. And that's how it's going to sync up and power the lighting effects. But you do need to have both of the USBs plugged in for the wrist rest to actually light up. This one is much more comfortable, it's very cushiony, and it's actually the only branding to be found on the keyboard itself with the Razer logo there right in the middle. All right, so a quick recap of the build quality and features before we move on to the next part of this comparison. They're both very solid keyboards. They don't feel cheap. They don't look cheap by any means, so no concerns there. In terms of you know some other things like the detachable wrist rest, they are both included, but I do prefer the feel of the Huntsman Elite wrist rest because it's just a lot more soft and cushiony. You also have the RGB light strip embedded into it, whereas on the K95 Platinum, uh, you had that light strip on the back of the keyboard, you know, kind of throwing some glow behind it. But again, on the Huntsman Elite, it's kind of embedded all around that keyboard, which is kind of cool. But you have a USB pass-through on the K95 Platinum, which the Huntsman Elite does not. And plus you have six macro keys, which I always like macro keys and stuff. And I think I do prefer the positioning and the build of the dedicated media keys on the K95 Platinum versus the kind of odd and just 
weird kind of looking media keys, which is again, a very minor thing, but they don't feel like they fit in with the rest of the keyboard. However, on the Huntsman Elite, you get that really, really awesome, like multimedia uh, configurable dial, which is kind of like you can make your own macros. So again, kind of weigh, weigh the differences there and pick what's gonna be more important to you. But now into the most important part about these keyboards, this is where they really start to differ greatly, is gonna be the key switches inside. Corsair with the K95 Platinum has cherry speed switches with their cherry silver switches. And on the Razer Huntsman Elite, we have their brand new opto mechanical, which are optical mechanical switches, which is pretty much like a little laser beam being tripped inside and actuating right away. Freaking laser beam. So since these are brand new, let's talk about them first. These feel identical to the Razer Green switches in the past, if you're familiar with those. But these are constructed entirely different. So once you press down on the key, it actuates by suppressing that spring inside, and the optical beam immediately sends a signal to your PC, letting it know that a key was pressed. And this is all done while still providing that clicky tactile response, and it's actually lighter than before. Plus now you have these switch stabilizers on the key so they don't rattle, it just feels a lot more secure. These optomechanical switches only need 45 grams of force and has an actuation point of 1.5 millimeters while traveling 3.5 millimeters total. That's gonna make these the fastest and lightest clicky switch. No, the fastest and lightest clicky switch. And then on the other hand for Corsair, you have the genuine Cherry MX speed switches with their K95 Platinum. And I mean, the word is in the switch name itself, speed. These switches also operate at 45 grams. They actuate at only 1.2 millimeters. So technically, yes, these are faster. It's still actuating quicker, but the switch itself is very linear. So you're not gonna get that click. You don't feel anything when you're actually actuating this. And that's kind of like a double-edged sword. Now I have been using this K95 Platinum since it released well over a year ago. And yes, these switches are noticeably faster when you're gaming but the downfall comes with it being a major adjustment. Training your fingers now to only press down a certain force with such a small travel distance is really not easy to get used to at first, especially when it comes to typing. Like when you're gaming, you'll, you'll be fine, but typing on this, it takes a long time to adjust. So to put this into a simple breakdown for you, the optomechanical switch is clicky. You feel the bump in OES, you'll hear that click too, but they are faster than the traditional Razer Green switches from the past. And these speed switches from Corsair are linear and very light, which is good for gaming, but definitely a hassle at first with everything else. So yes, I'll do a little sound test of both keyboards so you can hear how the Cherry speed switches sound, as well as the new Opto mechanical switches. So Cherry Speed from Corsair, Opto Mechanical from Razer. You heard the differences, but the main thing here is just gonna be how they really feel to you. Now moving on to, yes, the RGB, the Chroma, the Craze. When you pop off a keycap, you'll see how both are constructed here. Razer has their LED inside the frame of the board, which is gonna shine up through that clear shell. And with Corsair, we have the clear switch housing so the entire switch lights up. Both are gonna be easily configurable inside their respective software, which has definitely improved since I started doing these keyboard comparisons way back in 2014. Now for this part, I'm just showing you some quick possible effects and stuff that you can create with these keyboards, because guys, it's 2018. Odds are you've seen these effects before, and if you're familiar with any RGB keyboard, then you're gonna know the rundown with these effects. If you want an actual dedicated look into the individual effects with some more detail, then I suggest checking out my dedicated review of each keyboard. But the point here is yes, they're very flashy. You can create your custom layers and merge effects for both keyboards. You can also download community effects and link them to certain games. It's all possible, and it's nothing really new, nothing we haven't really seen for the past year or so. 
But in terms of the more relevant customization here for this video, mainly with the Corsair light bar and the Razer light strip, um, that is also synced to the effects as well. So you can kind of change that up individually if you want, or just have it synced together. It's, it's up to you. But altogether, the Huntsman Elite has now 62 individual zones around the keyboard, in addition to every single key being individually backlit, with the K95 Platinum's light bar being 20 zones, which is including their backlit logo in the middle of the keyboard, while also having every single key being individually backlit. But before we wrap this up, I did briefly talk about it in the beginning for the Huntsman, that multifunctional dial. This is brand new, really cool. Synapse lets you change this to be whatever you want, from your standard volume to even adjusting your microphone levels. If you have a headset or a mic plugged in, you can use it to scroll up and down or in and out of web pages, launch an app, bind it to a key or a mouse press. This is a really cool addition for a gaming keyboard. And this can be something really great for even people to utilize from like photo and video editors as well, just for those quick and easy adjustments. Big fan of this multifunctional dial from Razer. So again, if I had to kind of, you know, do a little wrap up of that, you can both go in and create your own effects, tie it and link it to other peripherals and stuff like that, which is cool. But I would say I do believe the Razer keyboard is just a tad, tad bit, uh, a little bit brighter, maybe like 15% brighter or something like that. It's noticeable, but very, very slightly. And also keep in mind, like I mentioned, I do have those like shine through keycaps on both of these, which is going to help give that little extra pop. Now, in the end, to kind of wrap this up, I mentioned in the beginning, I'm not picking a clear winner. And the one thing I usually say when it comes down to these keyboards and these head-to-head -head comparisons is if you're already in a company's ecosystem, like if you have a Razer headset and mouse already, then get the Huntsman Elite. If you have a Corsair mouse or headset, get the K95 Platinum. Just because you're sticking in that ecosystem still where all the products are linked together, it works as one because they're not entirely different. The main thing here gonna be at the, at the end of the day is just those key switches. RGB lights, whatever, you can shut them off. The features, yes, they're all gonna be give or take things, but the key switches are gonna be what's most important here. And that's gonna be what you have to decide. Which ones do you like? Which kind of feel do you like when you're gaming? So you decide that in the end. And uh, they both originally launched at $200. I'm pretty sure that's correct. I know the K95 Platinum, since this launched over a year ago, has definitely you know gone down in price. So weigh your options, guys. Decide what you think is most important in both these keyboards, you know, and then you can go decide from there. So I hope this did help you decide, though, you know, going over all the features and stuff like that. If you weren't familiar with them, I now hope you have a better idea of both these keyboards and which one would be best for you. And guys, if you like this video, definitely let me know by hitting that big thumbs up button down below to show your support. You can feel free to hit me up and follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp and drop some comments down below if you have any questions that I didn't get to. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.